What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. Okay, what exactly are we going to be talking about in this today's video? We have something very, very interesting, something very juicy to talk about, which also seems to be a subject that a lot of people are focused on right now. Okay, we are going to be talking about a specific photo from Balenciaga. Right now, if you don't know, there's a lot of controversy going on in regards to seeing satanic symbolism that was recently in some new Balenciaga posts that they were using to try to promote their brand and things of that nature. Um, there's a lot of people that are seeing there are some uh, pedo types of influences going behind the Balenciaga posts as well. It's very, very uh, fascinating, it's very interesting, and it is something that a lot of people are concerned about. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity as a professional occultist myself to really break down some of this symbolism in a specific picture that I saw that Balenciaga released for their brand and kind of dissect the picture and point out all the real occult symbols that are showing up in the picture, uh, more so looking at it from a Kabbalistic lens because what a lot of people don't know is that all these different pictures with all the subtle symbols you see on them, they actually have Kabbalistic correspondence uh, that connects back to those pictures. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Kabbalistic tree is the structure of initiation for all the, the uh, occult orders that exist. So the Freemasons, the Knights Templars, the Rosicrucians, um, the OTO, all of these different orders that you may have heard of uh, in connection with the Illuminati, they are well studied when it comes to the Kabbalistic tree. So you can imagine that the people that are placing occult influence within these industries and entertainment, like the photos that we're seeing with Balenciaga, you can imagine that they have a perspective uh, of the Kabbalistic tree and are using that type of Kabbalah symbolism in the image to actually cause an effect on an energetic level to the people that are observing the image. Okay, If this is something that you're interested in and you want to know a little bit more about this specific photo that I'm going to be breaking down in regards to Balenciaga, then this is definitely the video for you. So you have one thing to do and that is simply to stay tuned. Okay, so let's start by saying, well, let me first introduce myself for those of you that are new. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck, and I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in direct association with astrology. Okay, now with that being said, let's start with a context here. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, I have a private Facebook community. If you're interested in joining this community, you can simply go into the YouTube description drop down and you will eventually scroll down and you'll see that there is a link that will take you to a place where you can request to join. But inside of this Facebook community, there are about roughly around 600 members and there's tons of valuable information that is uh, consistently getting posted within this community. And every now and then I go in there and I check out what people are saying and I see some of the things that people are posting. And just recently I saw somebody made a post about Balenciaga. There was actually a couple posts on it, but this one in particularly was an image and it had, and I will actually literally be pulling up this image as I break it down for this video so that you can see what I'm talking about on the screen. Um, but there's this specific image. It should be on the screen right now. And I just noticed that as I was observing the image, I saw tons of, you know, intricate, intentional occult symbolism that's embedded within the image. And I know for a fact I have a perspective uh, when it comes to noticing subtle symbolism that a lot of people don't have. 
Um, and simply that may be because some people, you know, most people aren't professional occultists. This is something that I truly live for. This is something that is a part of me. The, I, I literally live and breathe anything occult. I love spiritual sciences. I love anything that has to do with the universe and the soul and things of that nature, especially when it comes to the darker arts. So this is something that I spend hours upon hours embracing and studying, and this is probably why I have an ability to break down symbolism uh, maybe a little bit deeper than the average person. Okay, So with that context being said, we are going to start breaking down this image. All right, so let's start here actually. So Balenciaga, there was actually another person, funny enough, in the Facebook group that made a post and uh, it was an image that they showed. And in this image, it showed that in Latin translation from, uh, from a, uh, what was it? It was English to Latin, I believe. They wrote Balenciaga and they spelt it B-A-A-L and then they separated N-C, E-N-C-I, and then they separated A-G-A, Aga. And when you type that in to the translation app that you have, if you have a translation app going from Latin to English, it will literally translate into ball is king or ball is the king. Okay, And I found this very interesting because I noticed that as all this controversy was rising about Balenciaga in the first place, I always like to first examine the name of the company that I'm dealing with or of the industry. And in this case, it's Balenciaga and I noticed the same symbolism as I observed the word myself. This is before I came across that post. This is before anyone brought my attention to it. I noticed the beginning of the word is Bal and then Enciaga. I didn't know what Enciaga meant, but I knew that there was some significance to the beginning of the word. And for those of you that don't know who Ball is, Ball is a well-known clipothic demonic entity and is truly a negatively polarized social memory complex for people that are walking the negative polarity. And Ball is also well-known in religious systems as well as being a king of the underworld, a king of the demons. Okay, And if you don't know about Ball, you can simply do your own research. But there are connections to Baal, there are connections to uh, Beelzebub, there are connections to uh, Belial. They're all similar in that nature. All right. Now with that being said, that was the first thing that I noticed about the name of the brand itself. I knew that was interesting. But then I came across this post in the Facebook group and I saw it and I was a little bit skeptical at first because in my mind I'm like, does it really translate to ball is king? That seems a little bit too obvious. And sure enough, I went and I have my own translation app that I've downloaded. I've been using it for a while actually. And I changed it so that it was Latin to English. And I typed it in the exact same way that I saw it on the post where I typed in B-A-A-L, separated N-C, E-N-C-I, and then separated Aga, A-G-A, and it literally did come out the same exact way, Ball is the king. And I thought that was very, very fascinating. Okay, so that was the first thing that I noticed. So clearly Balenciaga, and this is something that, you know, is already clear in cuts. The brand of Balenciaga, just like many other of these brands, they have a negative polarity influence behind them, which means the individuals that control the brands and control the company, control the corporations, they are negatively polarized people. They are what you would consider black magicians, whether they're unconscious of it or whether they're conscious of it. But at some level within the brand itself, there are going to be conscious black magicians. That's why they place so much uh, hidden occult symbolism in their images and in their advertisements, once again, with the intent that that symbolism will actually influence you as an observer. Okay? So now that that is out there, that's the first thing that we want to be aware of. Now let's start unpacking the image itself. So I have the image right here on my phone. So the image that we're looking at is we're looking at a younger girl who has red hair. She's standing there with black clothing on 
and she's holding this teddy bear, this white teddy bear, and this teddy bear is in bondage clothing, sexual bondage clothing. Um, you, if you look at the eyes of the teddy bear, it's it's sort of interesting. There's almost like a reptilian look to the eyes. There's like slits. The background, you can see there's a spear-like shape that is pink, which is the background of where this little girl is standing. You can see there is the moons of Hecate on that background. You can see there is a black dragon imprinted on the wall behind this girl. Uh, there's some pillows and there's some blankets that have... They are black, but then they have white print on it that says Balenciaga. So we see the black and white colorway going on. Then there's a bag right next to where the girl is standing, and you can see the bag has some reddish colorway and some bluish colorway on the bag itself. And then you have all these little trinkets that are just laid out in front of where this girl is standing, and I will be unpacking those as we go through it. Okay, and I'm looking at my phone because I'm, I'm looking at the image through here. So let's start here. So let's first start with the girl, the fact that they use a younger girl, okay? Because there's a lot of people that are curious as to why why is Balenciaga using a younger girl? You know, why are they using a child? What is that representing? What does that mean? And a lot of people may think that this is connected to the pedo aspect of what they're doing, and there there very well may be some connections to that, but more so importantly, the reason why they're using a younger girl is because of the energy field and the energy body that a child has over an adult. So let me explain. So I don't know if you've ever heard these types of conspiracies before in regards to children's sacrifice or babies that are being sacrificed by the Illuminati or people that are into black magic and things of that nature. Um, and you know, maybe a lot of people think that, oh, they're just completely evil and that's why they're doing it because, you know, they're completely innocent, uh, beings. And you know, if you're going to do that to an innocent being, then that automatically makes you an evil person. And I think that that is very, um, that is absolutely a negatively polarized thing to do. But the truth of the matter, and I'm telling you someone who is a black magician myself, who understands these energies and uses these energies myself, there is a reason why children are used in things uh, occult in nature. And that main reason that I want you to understand as a listener is because the child has a pure energy body. So you can imagine when someone is first incarnate into a body, being a child, there is not much programming that has taken place yet. So as that child ages, turns into the age of 10, turns into the age of 20, turns into the age of 30, the energy field of that being is getting tainted as time goes on, once again, because of all the programming. But just like most of you should know, a child is very free in the sense of just being able to like completely visualize whatever they want. They have such a strong imagination. They're not tainted. They're not indoctrinated yet. Okay. So the reason why occult orders use children, whether that's for things in the nature of sacrifice or things in the nature of using them in advertisements, like what Balenciaga is doing, is because they're tapping into the energy of pure emanation. That's truly what that's symbolizing. It's symbolizing pure energy. So there is an energy field that is able to be projected from the image itself that you're looking at, the Balenciaga image, and the fact that they're using a child is showing that pure energy, that pure emanation, that untainted, which is power. It truly represents power. That is power. Okay? So that is one of the main things that I really wanted to get across with the beginning of this photo is that it's not just solely associated with the pedo aspects of what um, Balenciaga may be doing. Although once again, there absolutely I'm sure some connections to that, but that's not stuff that I'm really uh, interested in at this moment. Um, but the main reason why they use children is because of, the, because of the energy field that children have. Okay, that's the main reason. It, it emanates much more profoundly because it's untainted. All right, so the reason why there's a child in this photo is because it's 
literally making the emanation behind the psychic influence of the photo itself more powerful. All right? Now, let's move into the fact that the woman, the little girl, I should say, actually, has red hair. The red hair is going to be the symbol of the scarlet woman who is the woman of Babylon. All right? This is an entity that is absolutely well known by all black magicians and even some skilled white magicians. The scarlet woman is an aspect of the dark feminine. The scarlet woman is also in association with uh, the beast within the abyss, which is Kuranzan Shugal, okay, which is the ultimate 666. Um, so for example, in Kenneth Grant's literature, who is one of the uh, one of the architects of the darker side of the Kabbalistic tree, he realized that, but not necessarily he realized, but him and the people that he was associated with, also Aleister Crowley included, realized that the Scarlet Woman is a manifestation of Karanzon. And for those of you, once again, that don't know who Karanzon, in, Karanzon is, Karanzon is the entity that resides within the abyss that tries to test individuals who go to cross the abyss, all right? And um, the fact that the girl has red hair is showing that connection to the Scarlet Woman, which is the negative polarity, the dark feminine. It's the essence of the blood moon, if you're familiar with astrological significance. It is that primal, very primal, dark energy, okay, that exists within our universe. No one can escape it. So the fact that they are using the red hair on that girl is showing that they are using the influence of the dark feminine in the form of the Scarlet Woman, which is a very, um, which is a very sh powerful force connected to primal chaos. So there is chaos associated with this image. So as someone's observing this image, as they're watching Balenciaga promote their their products. They're actually being influenced by that energy of that primal chaos coming through the form of Balenciaga, coming through the form, the fact that this girl is a younger girl, that powerful emanation. All right? So these are some of those symbols that are very subtle and can be hard for people to recognize. Now, we also see the symbol of the black dragon in the background. The black dragon is also connected to the Tiamat. It's connected to the Leviathan which is another aspect of that dark feminine. Okay, so we have the Scarlet Woman. We have the Black Dragon, Primal Chaos, another symbol. And then we have, if you look in the background, you can see there are the moons of Hecate, which is just another aspect of the dark feminine energy. Okay, the triple aspect, the mother, the witch, and the crone. And all of this symbolism that we're seeing between the moons of Hecate, the Tiamat Leviathan, and the Scarlet Woman, this is just showing the essence of primal chaos behind this image and showing that this girl in the photo, this younger girl, is of the negative polarity. Okay, now in real life, is she actually a negatively polarized being? Maybe not, but what is being displayed in the image is that this girl is the negative polarity, and she's young. Okay, and I also want to add this, the fact that they're use, using a young girl as well can also influence the next generation of children. This is also one of the subtle ritualistic, uh, ritualistic intentions that can also come from this image. It can actually influence the next generation of younger children to be more close or be more attracted to the negative polarity. Okay, so these are subtle things. But once again, that is what all this dark feminine symbolism is really showing. It's showing that primal chaos, and it's showing the negative polarity in a strong way. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so this is what's very interesting. So we have the girl who is holding on to a bear, okay? And the bear is dressed in sexual bondage clothing. A lot of people have no idea what this actually represents, and it gets very... Uh, very, it, it can actually get very deep. Okay, so let's go into it. So first, let's start with what does the bear represent? What is the bear associated with? So the bear can be associated with a couple things. 
The first thing that in my perspective it's connected to is Kanye West. Okay, so recently in regards to what's been going on with Ye, uh, for those of you that know, which most of you do I'm sure, he recently separated from pretty much all the major corporations and industries that he was connected to, a couple of them being Adidas and Balenciaga. Okay, now Ye is clearly of the positive polarity. He is a positively polarized individual and he was attached or he was working with a negatively oriented industry. So now that he's cutting ties with them, because these industries are not stupid and because they are associated with the occult, they know how to cause influence, psychically speaking, that most people would never understand. For example, this image that we're looking at of this girl is a, is a form of psychic warfare directed at Kanye West and I don't even know if Kanye West knows about that or I don't, you know, just take a second to think how many people would understand that. Most people would be like, what are you talking, like, how does that even make sense? And this is how powerful the psychic arts are. Imagery, symbolism affects the subconscious of anybody. And once again, when we're looking at the girl who's holding the bear, the reason why the bear connects back to Kanye is because if you don't remember, Ye had a specific album that he released way back in the day, and that album was a bear. So there is an energetic link between the bear, and it was, I believe it was one of, Kanye, uh, one of Ye's biggest albums. So the bear is truly linked to Ye. There is a connection between that animal and Ye and his energy body. So the fact that they just chose, they randomly chose a bear for this image is clearly showing the connection between Ye and that bear that that girl is holding. All right. Now notice how the bear is all white, and notice how the girl is dressed in all black. This is taking us to the checkerboard symbolism, and this is also connected to what we we what excuse me what we can see in the background as well on the pillows and on the blankets between the white and the black symbolism. The checkerboard, when it comes to the occult aspects of it, for those of you that don't know, the checkerboard symbolism is very profound, but in its general nutshell, it represents the positive polarity and the negative polarity, okay? Darkness and light. So the fact that the bear is white is showing that Kanye is of the positive polarity, and the fact that the girl who's holding and controlling the bear is wearing black, showing the connection to the negative polarity. This is showing dominance of the negative polarity over the positive, being Kanye as the bear. Okay, that is the main influence that I personally believe is behind that symbolism, once again, as a professional occultist myself, sharing that insight. Now, the bear can also be connected to, I mean, it gets very important to really look at the animal itself and understand what is the archetype behind the animal. So for example, if you were to go on Safari and you searched what is the spiritual meaning of a bear, you're going to see that a lot of that symbolism is connected to a powerful being. Bears are strong. Bears are predators. Bears are powerful. So we can also see, you know, outside of the Kanye influence and the connection to the bear, this just represents a positively positively oriented individual being controlled by a negatively polarized being. That is the essence of what this symbolism is representing. The girl holding the bear, uh, controlling it, is showing the negative polarity dominating the positive, specifically a powerful person who is walking the positive, but more so individualized towards Ye. All right? And I bet a lot of people didn't know about that. Now, what is the significance of the bondage clothing? See, a lot of people don't know about this as well. The bondage clothing is symbolized as sexual energy. So sexual energy is in correspondence to the serpent force. This is also what is known in mainstream as the kundalini. This force, the serpent force, once again being sexual energy, truly translates into power. So the reason why the bear is dressed in this sexual bondage cloth, excuse me, bondage clothing is because the image itself is projecting the control of Ye's sexual energy. All right, so that little girl 
who's of the negative polarity holding this bear in sexual clothing is demonstrating she's controlling his power. She's controlling his sexual energy. She's controlling the way he emanates. That's what that symbolism represents. And you can also see there is a lock around the bear's neck. Once again, bondage clothing. To bond something is to bind something. All right, and that's why the bear is dressed in that symbolism. It's not just because there is a pedo aspect to this. It's a lot deeper than what you might think, okay? It's that symbol of controlling sexual energy. If you can control someone's sexual energy through psychic warfare, then you can cause them to bind themselves, essentially. You can influence them to waste energy in things that are not worth wasting energy on, and then you bind them. You lock them down. All right? And that's what that image is projecting. So every single person who's observing that image, which is millions of humans, they're actually programming the image into their own subconscious, unconscious minds, and it's actually finding a form of manifestation which can actually affect yay and also affect everyone else and all everyone else who's observing the image based on what that image is intended to project which once again i already mentioned a lot of primal chaos comes from this image so somebody can literally look at this image and just like a sigil can influence your unconscious and subconscious and cause real life change this image itself can cause changes of chaos in your life that cause things to break down cause things to shatter Okay, so somebody could look at this image and the next thing you know, they get into an argument with somebody and they don't even know why. They think, oh, this person's an asshole, but they actually have no idea that the root of why they were influenced by that energy and why they may have felt that aggression out of nowhere came from the image itself. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day that's still not an excuse to not be able to control your own emotions or be the observer of your reality, all right? But that is what that symbolism shows. Now, as we look down, there's a, there's a couple other subtle symbols. So let's actually look here. So you look at the background, and you have this almost like spear-shaped pink background. It almost looks like the back end of a bed, but it's a spear-shaped pink background. That is simply, okay, so pink is a color that's oftentimes used uh, when it comes to music videos, A-list celebrities, uh, and things in that nature because the color pink is the mix of red and white. And when we look at the Kabbalistic tree, the sphere of red is the sphere of Gavura ruled by Mars, which is traditionally known to be one of the most violent and destructive spheres on the tree. And to some Kabbalists, they literally think that the entire clip off itself or the negative polarity came from the sphere of Gavura. But then you have the white, which is symbolic of the top sphere on the Kabbalistic tree, which is Kether. And Kether is associated with the source sphere. It's represented as the crown. So when you have red and white put together, you get the color pink. And the pink symbolism is oftentimes used in images like this, as well as music videos and things of that nature, because what it's really demonstrating is destructive energies turning into positive things for the person using the destruction. Okay, so if you know how to use Kabbalistic symbolism properly and you know how to embed it inside of any form of ritual, you can literally use colors as representations of spheres and you can combine them to produce an outcome. So the destruction that comes from the Mars, the destruction that's going to come from all the dark feminine symbolism that's embedded within this image is going to transform and we could even say transmute into positive things, crown-like things, source-like things for the individuals that are using that symbolism. That's what that pink background is representing. Then when we look at the bluish bag that is next to the girl as well, there's a reason why they chose a blue bag, okay? Blue is connected to the sphere of Chesed, which is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is traditionally known as the sphere of good fortune, expansion, higher level truth. So we have a bag right next to the girl as well that just happens to be blue, and that's representing good fortune. All right, there's 
good fortune that is coming to the negatively polarized girl in the picture. Good fortune coming to those of the negative polarity. So if you're someone who's a negatively polarized entity like myself, we can gain a lot of value from industries like Balenciaga. Okay, all the negatively polarized industries that exist, we gain benefits from that, from their work. Okay, but if you're of the positive polarity, it can be a little bit confusing and it can affect you in a different way. All right, but that's what that blue bag is symbolizing. So that would be the pink and the blue symbolism and why they decided to use those colors specifically. Now, and you can also see the pink and the blue eye on the bear itself. And then those slits that are on that bear's eye is connecting back to that serpent force that I was talking about, which is the snake, the serpent energy, the sexual energy. And once again, the reason why the, the eyes are pink and blue is because we're connecting back to the, um, the spheres on the tree. And if that is connected to Kanye or Ye, then this would be representing as Ye is destroying himself or getting destroyed, all of his good fortune is leaving him and all that source-like energy that he has is going to the younger girl who is of the negative polarity represented as the Scarlet Woman, the manifestation of Kuranzan. All right? And that's what that represents. Then we see a symbol of a rabbit who just happens to be right next to the girl. What does the rabbit symbolize? So we've seen the rabbit show up a couple times. We've seen the rabbit in the movie um, The Matrix. All right. And of course, we have the rabbit in the photo, which to some people may seem completely random, but to somebody like myself is absolutely intended. The rabbit is a symbol of the 11th hidden sphere of death on the Kabbalistic tree because the rabbit is synonymously known for the rabbit hole. And the rabbit hole is connected to the sphere that exists within the abyss, which is known as death, and represents knowledge. Okay? So the rabbit hole represents that hidden sphere, and that hidden sphere on the Kabbalistic tree just happens to be the sphere that is the entrance point from the front side of the tree to the back side of the tree. And for those of you that don't know about the front and the back, the front is the more so positively oriented side of the tree of life. And then the back side is the negatively polarized side of the tree of death. Okay? It's all the same tree, but there's two aspects to it, two charges to it. And the reason why they're using the rabbit in the picture is because in order to bring all these universe B influences, which is the back side of the tree, over across into the phenomenal world into the real world of what people think is real they need that rabbit symbolism they need that death symbolism that hidden 11th sphere symbolism and the way that they tapped into that energy is by using the rabbit okay so the rabbit is always going to be traditionally known from an occult perspective of that 11th hidden sphere that takes you to the other side and once again that 11th hidden sphere can be the entrance points into universe B from universe A. Or things from universe B can come out of it and enter into universe A. And that is more so what we're seeing in this image. I mean, it's a little bit of both. You know, the image itself can influence somebody who's observing it to enter into universe B. And it can also influence someone who's observing it to get affected by universe B forces coming out of the image. And these are all very subtle psychic sciences that I'm discussing. And that is what it is. So that's what the rabbit symbolizes. All right, let's see here. So then we have a little bit more Kabbalistic influence. So you can see that there are these three chains that just have to, excuse me, that are um, right in the front. So there are three chains that are just, yeah, like right in front of the image. Um, and, you know, if you're looking at it, you can see what I'm talking about. The three chains are, are simply symbolic of the supernal triad, which is the top of the tree. It's the top three spheres representing higher dimensional influence, higher dimensional manifestation. Okay, the lower seven spheres are connected to the more so mundane matrix, 
but the higher three are connected to higher dimensional awareness. So the fact that they're using the three chains, they're connecting into the energy of the supernal triad of the Kabbalistic tree, Keter, Chokma, and Bina, which is the source of where manifestation originates from those three spheres into the matrix. So that is just causing further influence of manifestation for what is embedded within this photo. Then we see there are four glasses that just happen to be right behind the chains. And the glasses have a couple symbols as well. The four aspects, the four, the reason why there's four glasses specifically is because the four is connected to the four, wor the four worlds of Kabbalah, which are associated with north, east, south, and west. All right? So when we're hitting it on all ends like that, north, east, south, and west, and then you have the girl who is the real life living spirit, now what you have is you have the pentagram. So this is just linking into all the elemental energies, linking into, once again, the energies of the four corners. And that is further causing manifestation for this image. And that's why they chose the number four. Um, and then the fact that their glasses can also have a little bit of a correspondence to the eyes. The eye. So you know about the all-seeing eye, which is represented as the observers, the watchers. Okay, so people that are of the negative polarity like to use the eye symbolism. And once again, what does this symbol represent? This three fingers up, eye. The three, the supernal triad. And then the eye, the observer who is observing from higher dimensions, higher dimensional awareness on the lower species, okay? That's what this symbol represents. So once again, the fact that they use the glasses is connecting to the eye, which is the observers, people that are of the negative polarity that are observing how their psychic influences manifest in the world around them and are literally in control of the matrix itself because of that level of knowledge and that level of wisdom of knowing how to influence it and also observing how events are unfolding. Okay, that's also what that symbol can be connected to. All right, and then we have, let's see, we have H2O right there, which is connected to the water. We have a shoe, which is connected to earth, grounding. We have a little bag. I think there's even a candle in the background which will connect to fire. Um, and then there must be something connected to air. Let's see. Yeah, and they just, they got all this like little knickknacks and stuff on the ground. So yeah, so for the most part, that's, that's everything that I really wanted to unpack within this uh, video. Um, definitely. You know, watch over this video multiple times if you have to, to really like put the pieces together on some of the things that I was talking about. And I am very well aware that there may be a lot of people that are, um, may be watching this that are not able to put these pieces together. And that's completely fine. Uh, once again, the reason why I see the symbols that I see and I'm able to unpack it is because I've been doing this for years. I've been embracing subtle occult symbolism for quite a long time and I've really developed an ability to notice when there are symbols that are that are let's just say higher dimensional in nature and what what is their intent what are they meant to project what are they meant to do so I've been doing this for a long time and that's why I'm able to really break these things down the way that I am I'm not making these things up this is not just me trying to reach for like okay this has to mean this and this this is stuff that I've seen happen over and over and over again in other types of industries with other types of symbols, um, even in music videos and movies and things of that nature, and I can see patterns. So this is not the first time I've seen symbols that are similar to this. Um, but yeah, once again, watch this video multiple times to try to go over some of the things that I talked about, and then also take that information with you and apply it to other things that you're able to observe in your life as well, because this is not the first time that you're going to come across a symbolism. You're going to see it in other things as well, okay? It's gonna show up in other places. And the more you can start becoming aware of that, the more you can start becoming a better observer. And that will serve you no matter you know what path you're on or what it is that you're doing, all right? 
And then if you get to a certain level, if you're on the negative polarity, you can start using this symbolism. You can start using this to your advantage, okay? Because I do. I use it to my advantage. For those of you that know, I mean, you see the entire intro of my YouTube videos. I have the Scarlet Woman right on my intros, every single video, okay? And she's holding the skull. The skull is connected to death, opens up that 11th gate, and then that transitions into my vampire sigil, which has a whole nother background to it, a whole nother energetic influence to it. So I use all these symbols in my day-to-day -day life as well, and I use them to project influence, all right? Uh, and once again, you can too, but first you need to learn the symbols and understand how to use them by recognizing what they represent, all right? With that being said, this is going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you very much. If you enjoy this content, definitely come down here and hit the thumbs up button, okay? Also, come down here and hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And with content like this, you absolutely do not want to be missing out. Trust me. Also, come down here and hit the subscribe button because if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, you're making a big mistake because you could further be linking in. There really is an energetic component to it. Just like what we discussed with this picture, all those like subtle influences that can actually cause profound effects, the same thing takes place when you subscribe to somebody's YouTube channel, especially somebody that's spiritual like myself. All right? If you don't want to subscribe, by all means, forget about it. Now, I'm going to take your awareness to literally the most important link within the entirety of this YouTube description. This is the first link at the very top of the YouTube description. You cannot miss it. Trust me. This is where you can join my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content, and none of this content is meant for my public YouTube channel. And that is very intentional, designed by myself. I have content that's similar to this video. I have content that's in the form of live streams with tons of valuable information embedded within them. And then I have content that is in the form of practical content, which is me performing real occult practices on camera while teaching you how to perform them yourself. All of these forms of content are more advanced and more personal than what you're getting on my public channel. Then as you move into tier three and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities. Then as you move into tier number four, this is the top tier of the Patreon, but this is not only just the top tier, this is literally the most popular tier of the Patreon as well, and that is rightly so. This is what is called the Universe B Vampire Service. This is a service that I perform on the 29th of every single month that has a 29th, and it's designed to completely change the energetic structures of the participants of the service itself, whether you're a new participant or a pre-existing one. It's designed to completely change the energy field of the participants to be more so universe B dominant, which essentially means more negatively polarized. What this does is this gives these individuals an ability to exist within the darker energy areas and locations of the multiverse itself without inherently getting harmed by them, but rather developing knowledge wisdom, understanding, and potential power from them instead. This also gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and subconscious minds, which is feminine in its nature. And it also gives them a psychic capability to pull in energy from dark energy and chaos in their environment to transmute into their own power and evolutionary potential. If this is something that intrigues you, and you are drawn to it, then definitely take advantage. Top tier, tier number four, first link in the YouTube description. We're going to leave it there. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give a special shout out specifically to everyone who is a Patreon member for taking your knowledge, your practices, and your studies to that other side. Big shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, as we move into the second link below, you can't miss it. Second link in the YouTube description. This is where you can book a tarot card reading with me. Now, this is a very unique tarot card reading that I promise you've never received before. In this tarot card reading, I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on the Kabbalistic tree. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moment 
and then what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future, all based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree. I don't know anyone else that does readings that are similar to mine. I've done, at this point, about 800 readings. I do a reading literally every single day. I've received tons of valuable feedback from basically every single person I've done a reading from uh, or done a reading on. Um, and if this is something that you want to take advantage of, you can definitely do so. That is at the second link below. You can book your reading there. All right. Now also within that same second link below, you have an option to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. If you're someone who has some more, let's say, intimate questions in regards to your personal journey and you want to talk to somebody like myself and potentially get some deep answers to those questions, then absolutely booking a one-on-one -on -one call would be a great option. All right. Now, if you're somebody taking your journey a little bit deeper and a little bit more serious, there are options to book mentorship for six weeks and all the way up to three months. I have all that information in that second link below, and you can read through the details if this is something that you are drawn towards. All right. With that being said, I'm going to leave that there. Now, as we move into the third link in the YouTube description, this is where you can become a YouTube member. As you become a YouTube member, you're gaining access to many different types of benefits special shout outs during the live streams, an ability to leave a super chat for free every single month, um, entrance into the wonderful YouTube community in general. All right, But most importantly, you're gaining access to the Psychic Warfare Emoji program. What this is, is this is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles that can be used in a certain configuration. You link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic effects to that target. Similar to how this image that we've broken down in today's video causes effects to people who observe the image, the same thing happens with my Psychic Warfare Emoji program by using that occult symbolism, observing it, and hitting enter with a LinkedIn target. There are almost 2,000 posts where individuals have taken advantage of this service and there are even people right now, as I'm saying this, that are using it. If this is something that you want to use for yourself, you can definitely do so. Third link below will take you to where you can join and become a YouTube member. With that being said, this is where I'm going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I appreciate all of you very, very, very much. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.